In this video, we are going to study the shell and tube evaporator flood evaporation used in industrial refrigeration. If this topic interests you, stay with us, make yourself comfortable, and of course, subscribe to our channel. Let's start by saying that the operation of this evaporator is based on the fact of accumulating a quantity of refrigerant in a liquid state inside a casing in such a way that there is a percentage that evaporates and leaves the tank in a vapor state while another quantity replaces it, always in a liquid state. The heat produced by the evaporation of the refrigerant comes from the water that is being cooled. The most outstanding characteristics of the shell and tube evaporator with flooded operation are the following. One. As its name implies, a shell and tube evaporator consists of a shell and a large number of straight tubes parallel to each other. Two. With flooded operation, the refrigerant for the refrigeration circuit is in the casing, and the liquid to be cooled is in the pipes. Three. The liquid refrigerant from the refrigeration circuit is fed through a float valve that is responsible for maintaining a constant level of refrigerant inside the casing. 4. The casing will be the evaporator of the refrigeration circuit. 5. The exit of the refrigerant from the evaporator or casing is located at the top and is always above the level, therefore to exit, the refrigerant must be in a vapor state, in order to rise and reach the exit point. 6. The expansion valve is in charge of lowering the pressure of the refrigerant that enters the evaporator. But the amount of refrigerant that the evaporator handles is regulated by the float at the entrance, and by the rate of refrigerant that evaporates. 7. Flooded shell and tube evaporators can be single-pass or multi-pass pipe type, depending on pressure drop and velocity. 8. Approximately 50% to 75% of the tubes are immersed in liquid refrigerant, with the space above providing a margin for the vapor generated through the evaporation of the liquid below. 9. This type of evaporator is most often used with screw or centrifugal compressors. 10. This type of evaporator uses fins outside the tube when working with ammonia. 11. In evaporators that work with freons, the fins are used on the refrigerant side. 12. The performance of the refrigeration circuit with this type of evaporators is high because practically zero superheating is guaranteed. 13. Steel tubes are used in evaporators that work with ammonia, while copper tubes are used with freons. 14. The liquid refrigerant that surrounds the tubes. It becomes foamy, and there is also oil foam in a reasonable amount. 15. Since there is a possibility that the vapor exiting the casing may contain liquid droplets in the form of a mist, mist eliminators or a coalescing filter can be used to separate the liquid dots from the vapor. 16. This liquid mist must not be allowed to escape from the evaporator shell, or loss of performance and possible compressor damage will result. 17. The provision of a large free volume in the shell, above the tubes and the liquid below, results in a low velocity flow, and allows mist and liquid droplets to be retained while the remaining vapor is extracted through the suction outlet. 19. The shell and tube evaporator flooded operation is not recommended for applications where the temperature of the cooled liquid may be below 3 degrees C. As the water circulates through the pipe in the case of freezing it can cause the pipes to burst. 20. The refrigeration system with this type of evaporator requires a large amount of refrigerant charge. 21. Influenced by the height of the refrigerant liquid column inside the shell, the evaporation temperature at the bottom of the cylinder is high, which will lower the heat transfer temperature. 22. Oil will accumulate at the bottom of the casing, and there must be reliable lubricant return measures, otherwise it will affect the safe operation of the system. 23. Flooded evaporators reach the closest temperature between the refrigerant evaporation temperature and the water outlet temperature. At this moment, a link to a related video that may interest you is appearing. We are going to go see it.